Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to start a short series on how to set up and use the Fluent and Hibernate library. I know in the past we have posted other episodes that talk about and hibernate, and in some of those in great detail, and they're great. But for the most part those episodes focus on what and hibernate is and how it should be used from a fundamental perspective. What we'd like to do in this series is show you how to get up and off the ground running using the Fluent and Hibernate library. Fluent and Hibernate is a library that sits on top of Inhibernate, which allows you to configure your Inhibernate mappings in your application rather than in the .hbm files. Having the ability to configure Inhibernate in code has many great advantages, but the largest are the discoverability and refactorability. This is the Fluent and Hibernate website and get to it fluentandhibernate.org. It has some great information on here. There's a wiki that will show you how to get started as well. and also allows you to download the latest bits. Check it out for more information on Fluent and Hibernate. In this episode, we're going to focus on two things. One, how to get up and running with Fluent and Hibernate, how to connect to the database, and how to set up our mappings. We're also going to set up our mappings on a very simple scenario. We're just going to map uh, an entity of episode to a table that is the name episode. That should be enough to get you up and off the ground. In future episodes, we'll take a look at how to do the various different mapping scenarios. Um, has many, so you know, one to many, many to many, one um, one to one, things of that nature. So in our episode here, we're going to use the Hibernate.burrow name uh, project to do our session management. I have another episode where I show you how to get up and off the ground running with Burrow. So if you're not familiar with Burrow, check that out. But with Burrow, basically, it takes care of all my session management for me. I don't have to worry about all that stuff, which is great. It allows me to worry about my business problem, not my session management problem. But even using Burrow, I do have to configure and hibernate. I have to tell it how to find my database via connection string. I also have to tell it where my mappings are. So which, which assembly contains all my mappings that will map my entities to my data model. So to configure Fluent and Hibernate, there's two steps here. First, I'm going to show you is how to connect to your database. And the other is how to set up Fluent Hibernate to actually know where the database is as well as where your mappings are. So first let's do MS SQL configuration because we're going to be using a SQL server here. And then you get an option here, SQL 2005, 2008, or 7. Well, I'm going to use 2005. And then I'm going to say my connection string is, and then you'll see I have two overloads here. My first overload will allow me to provide a string parameter. Well, I'm not going to do that. That's bad because then if it changes, I have to recompile my app, and I don't want to do that. So instead, well, I'm going to use the first one here, which gives me a, a action that I can actually map, and I'm going to go into my app config file. So I'm going to say C dot from connection string with key, and I'm going to call this DB connection string. Now this DB connection string actually comes straight out of our app.config file. And you'll see I have a section here called connection strings. And I have a element or a property here that's for my DB connection strings. And then here's my actual connection string. So that's what Fluent Hibernate is going to get for me. Well, let's go ahead and call this MS SQL configuration. We're going to store that off because we're going to use it here in a second. Now that we've created our database connection, now I need to set up in Hibernate via Fluent to connect to my database as well as my mappings. So I'm going to say Fluently, that's the namespace from Fluent Hibernate, configure. Now you'll see it takes a option of no parameters or a configuration object. Because Burrow gives me the NH configuration uh, class, I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to set up my database. So I have to do dot database. And you'll see that there's two options here. I can configure my persistence now, or I can use the the, the uh, property I configured a second ago, which I'm going to use. And then I need to set up my mappings. So I'm going to say map fluent mappings. And I'm going to say add from assembly of. And we're going to provide episode. What this allows me to do is say, you know what? There's going to be an assembly that has an episode entity. Go ahead and scan that entire assembly for my mappings. That's to me is the simplest. And then last, I'm going to say build configuration. I'm done. Fluent Hybrid is now completely set up, and I should be ready to rock and roll. So now that we have our connection to our database and we've set up our mappings, so it's actually time to create our mappings. Here is our episode entity. 
pretty straightforward, has an ID, name, description, things of that nature. Now I need to actually set up my mappings for it. When setting up Fluent in Hibernate, you need to create a class for every mapping you want. So let's go ahead and click Class, I'll call this Episode Mappings. This class must be public. It needs to inherit off of a, a base class called Class Map. And Class Map is going to take a generic. And we're going to call this Episode. What this will basically say is I'm creating a mapping for my episode entity. In order to set up our mappings, we need to create a constructor. And then once I've set up my constructor, I want to say, you know, what table am I hitting? I'm going to be hitting the episode table. Now in our scenario here, episode table matches the name of the entity episode. So technically I don't need to provide that. But we're going to do it here just for sake of example. Now most tables in a database do have some kind of identifying column in them. Fluent allows you to use ID and you can use your know, lambda syntax and find the property that matches to your ID. Now if our ID is an auto signed or auto increment key, Fluent will use that as the defaults. But if it's not, I can do generated by and I can tell it how it's generated. Do I sign it? Is it a GUID? Is it an entity? Is it incremental? You name it. But because again, because we're just going to use the auto increment out of the database, we can leave that alone. And now what we need to do is map a couple columns. And to map them, what I'm actually doing is taking a column from the database and mapping it to a property in my entity. I'm going to say map dot name. Now here we're going to say we're going to map number, but if I don't have a column in my database called number, Instead, it's actually called episode number. So what Fluent allows me to do is has an overload, overload where I can provide the actual name of the column. Again, if, my, if I'm not following convention in my database to my object model. And I can do the same thing here. Release date maps to episode date. And then last, we can say enable. So I've now officially set up my mappings so I can pull data out of the episode table. The next thing I need to do is actually create a unit test that will hook this up for me. So let's go ahead and open up our unit test. And I've already got a couple things stubbed out for us. Since we are using Burrow, I do need to set up the workspace. And I've also set it up so an Hibernate profile will run in the background so we can monitor what we're actually doing. So because I'm using Burrow, I need to actually go into my Burrow framework and grab my current section session. And I can do session.get. We're just going to keep it simple here. And I'm just going to get episode one. This is for sake of example, this should be more than sufficient. And I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. And if all goes well, when I run this, I should be able to hit my database. So it looks like I was able to hit my database correctly, and I know that because I got to my breakpoint. If I wouldn't have set up my Fluent mappings in my Fluent configurator appropriately, I would have got an exception. So it's F10 over this. And let's see what I have in my object and sure enough I do have data which tells me my mapping is set up appropriately. Let's take a look at what Fluent Hibernate has for me. So I've opened up Fluent Hibernate here and you can see that Fluent, or I'm sorry, NH Profiler. And you can see that I was able to see the SQL. It says one row was found and took 51 milliseconds to return. And here's a SQL that was generated by in Hibernate. If you're not familiar with in Hibernate Profiler and you're starting to use in Hibernate, Go out, spend the money on this. The tool is more than worth it. It will save you hours upon hours of not only headaches, but debugging time as well. So we now know we can hit our database. So in a matter of eight or nine minutes, we've learned how we can configure Fluent and Hibernate to hit our database by first creating our connection string to it, and then setting up our actual and Hibernate configurations using the Fluent uh, interface. We've also taken a look at how you can set up very basic mappings for hitting, having your entities mapped to your tables. In future episodes, we'll take a more in-depth look at the various different mapping scenarios and styles you can do. 
but this should be enough to get you up and off the ground. Hope you learned something. Until next time.